Hi guys. The title of this video is Are We Are His Choice to Be His Voice <laughs> and His Feet. So what's God telling you to do? But this is going to be not all over the map, but a little bit messy because there's several messages wrapped into this one and I'm going to try to keep it in a very sh as short as I possibly can. So just bear with me. But <clears throat> Part of it's about censorship. Part of it's about us speaking up. Part of it's about us doing what he's telling us to do. So check out the video I've got out on how God sees America concerning abortion. The first part, it wasn't that great. I heard a little bit, a lot. But then he told me that, you know, the church has dropped the ball on this, guys. We as his body have dropped the ball. We're quick to slap labels on people that are in, that are in sin course it's sin. Multiple sins. <clears throat> but we're not helping them. And it's not just the woman. He said, don't forget about the man. And it, it's affected a lot of people, guys. Comedians are all over the internet blasting out there. Why? Even some big name comedians. Jim Carrey and you know, that one that he had about the governor of Alabama. Well, now governors are like, man, I'm going to have no, we're going to have a national day of prayer. On the day that Roe versus Wade was enforced and kind of shoved down our throats, really. <clears throat> so, but it's time to speak up, guys. I know the world's not going to like it. I'm not trying to be antagonistic, argumentative. I'm being about my father's business. <laughs> Isaiah 60 is a great one to start with. Isaiah 60, 22 is another great one. Um, <clears throat> but we have to speak up, guys. Just reposted something. Being censored all over the internet. It's already started, guys. It's pretty getting deeper and deeper. People all over the social medias are getting censored. I got censored twice. One... Spoke against a retailer, a major retailer in America, and said, Guys, you ought to try reading the Bible. And I quoted three scriptures, and it didn't even, it never even existed. It got, I'm getting a bogus reason why I was pulled off. It was a security risk. And all I did was quote the Bible. It happened twice. And then this book that I wrote in, in May, March. 2019 called Jesus Christ in you the hope of glory how were his story and his feet and I can email you a copy of it I got it the book will be back on but it got blocked and at first it was some kind of bogus reason kind of along the lines of plagiarism and I was like it didn't make any sense mad prayed about it really mad All I was doing was revising it never been any problems then I pressed the issue and then it started coming to light. They said I quoted the Bible too much, too many scriptures, too much content. I had to get permission to do that. So I'm like, who do I get permission from? Kind of, but I, you know, it's starting to get solved because I prayed a lot about it and it will get solved. And actually it's gonna be a great testimony, honestly. But censored. So our voice is being st systematically stolen from us, guys, okay? If we don't say something, it's like, um, I'm, you know, some of you may agree, some of you may not. <clears throat> Carrying guns, okay? <clears throat> I'm all for the Second Amendment. I think we should be able to. Maybe should be a little bit more stringent on after you get to carry it because you know but you know what i'm not going to but that's okay you may i'm glad some people did because look at some of the stuff that just recently happened in some of the churches and so it's like but my point is this we're all pardon the pun up in arms about carrying the guns well what about carrying the bible that's what i'm going to carry the biggest Biggest weapon I've got. But you can't go into most public schools with it. Try it. Go to an airport. Try it. Go to the court, some of the courthouses. Try it. 
it's kind of a pig in a poke on that one. Where was our where was our uproar then? That's what happened with this all this Roe versus Wade issue. You know, we just kind of stuck our head in the sand and said, "Oh well, it's kind of like what it is." Well, you know, that's why we got so much ungodly laws going on, guys. And it's time to. I'm not politicizing this either because that's gotten way out of hand. The Democrats versus the Republicans, but we do need to be involved in praying for our leadership from presidents. The school PTA teach to the teachers and PTA to the mayors to the all of them. I'd rather have godly men and women as judges, governors, representatives, Congress, all the way to the president. Wouldn't you? Of course. We want this country back. We want to turn this country back. It may not, I'm not talking about speaking up because we don't have to be in somebody's face and that can, that's not what I'm talking about, about that kind of speaking up. It can be in actions, it can be in deeds, it can be in going places, it can be in whatever he's telling you to do. Because the enemy is telling you, oh no, you can't do that, that's not Christian-like, oh you're being judgmental and all this other garbage. That's where I'm going with this, guys, okay? Some of the messages the Lord's given me, and this is one of them, and I'm going to put it together. i just been really overloaded myself with a few storms in my life check out my video there's a storm coming to america i even dated it 8 11 to 9 11 2020 because i've got that in prayer too i asked the lord about that but i got it last august before 8 11 it was two weeks before it was like an 8 1 somewhere around there and i got this in a dream and the Lord's within a couple within a, over a period of a couple weeks, I was like, man, what do I do, God? Do I blast this out there? Do I warn people what's going on? <laughs> Didn't know what to do. So the storm was going to hit my my life first, mine and my wife's life first, and it did. And it's been multiple storms, guys. One of them's raging so much, like that scripture that's in the Bible where Jesus was in the boat and he was asleep, and everybody's like, we're going to perish. Gonna sink, die. Don't you care, Master? Wake up. Peace be still. Well, one of them, guys, in, in some of its, you know, unfortunately self self centered me. One day I will share the details right now. No, not specific details because I don't want to hurt other people. <clears throat> me, I'm okay. <clears throat> I'll get it out there. But that one, or one of the maybe six, all at once, <clears throat> I can't even see the boat, guys. It sunk a long time ago. Nothing, not even a debris field. I'm, can't nothing to bail out. I got no water to bail out. So it's like, man, okay, God. But Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego is where I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna stand. I know he's able. He's done so many things, guys. And even in the midst of this, if you were, if you knew some of the details of them, man, you'd be like, wow. I'm not, it's not me, though, guys. It's just he's preparing us to be his voice. So you know what? I'm going to be his voice on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, going to start Pinterest, tw uh, Twitter, on Twitter. Uh, this other stuff and it's like you know I was gonna do all this stuff guys they told me to do website and everything and it's still kind of a little lame and I need some computer help badly that's gonna come praying about it started a class got other avenues that are coming together with other people told me to do all this stuff including a website and if you knew my technical skills they are pretty non-existent that's why this video is just a video and it's lame and I don't know how to do podcasts and all this other stuff and I'm kind of doing it by myself and on a shoestring budget. It's all for 800 bucks, guys, or 900 bucks. <clears throat> Go type in Google, Google it. Jesus is alive in America. And you'll see my YouTube, our YouTube channel. You'll see our Facebook channel. You'll see our Instagram channel. I got a domain, Jesus is alive in America.com. 
as a website a little lame still i'm working on that i've got he's dealing with me about the connectivity but anyhow i was like man god how am i gonna get all this stuff kind of overloaded with that that was part of the storm it's like man i'm so so busy and i've been having to help my wife with some things she lost her job the week of christmas that's part of one of the storms and that's when we knew it was coming, but there's just some storms involved in that. I will spare you guys the details, because like I said, I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus. I'm still praying about it, but it's one of those the good, the bad, and the ugly. There's some good in it, some ugly in it. There's a lot of bad in it. Some of it's me, right in the middle of it. Some of it's not. Some of it's circumstances. Some of it's others. They don't even, may not even know or even care or whatever. It doesn't, irrelevant. I'm still, some of it's demonic. So I was like, okay, God. But it wasn't just that one. It was multiple ones. I was like, man, the enemy was like, man, I'm going to kick your butt, but I'm going to kick it good. I'm going to, bam, 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 bam. So it's like, okay. But, it's not going to stop me from being his voice, guys. So, this is this is one of the messages, because I do need to want, want to make this short so people watch this. One piece of it, he's been dealing with me about that. And it's been going on for several months, and I don't have it all yet. One of the messages, the themes of one of the messages, goes along with the Cain and Abel. And how Cain, he's like, man, why... Why'd your continents drop? Because you're all, I didn't accept your offering. If you did good, I'd accept it. If you didn't, because there's sin and lying at the, at the door and in your heart, and I didn't. But you read on and read deeper into it, and all of it, he wants us to overcome the sin, not the sin to overcome us. And then he was dealing with me about how acceptable offering he wants is our sin the deepest darkest places where we won't even go so that's partly why my, some of my storms are coming it's yes it's destroying some things and even some idols and some different things in my life but it's clearing a path so i thank god for that hurts ugly <sighs> especially my part in it, to me, but hurting others too. So it's like, man, God, some of it, some of it's not, some of it's others hurting us or about vice versa or whatever. <clears throat> but he wants us, that, that's not part of the part that was my and my yard that needs mowing, my hedges that need clipping, my house that needed painting, my yard that needed cleaning up really badly, was some of my dark spots in my life. And I will share that with you one day, the details of that part of it, at least enough what I can say, because like I said, well, it's not going to do any good or accomplish anything if I throw other members of the body of Christ under the bus on this. It'll, it'll get nowhere. Just give the devil more room and heyday. They're going to have to come to it. They don't have to worry about what I'm going to say. Maintaining their image. They need to worry about what God has to say. God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word. Just like I do. So, but, so that's part of it, guys, about being His voice. Well, I repost a lot of stuff from, re-share a lot of stuff from Facebook because I got people that are actual, you know, pastors on there and some of them are really good to just, can tell they're just men and women of Christ. Some of them don't even look like ministers. Some of them are young, young people. I know this, I don't care tattoos or whatever you know they don't even look like preachers doesn't matter to god read matthew 20 
that'll pretty much cut through a lot of that garbage, guys. We know, know a really good pastor up in, if you're ever out in the Knoxville, Tennessee, I don't think you'll mind this plug. I can't remember his name because that's one of the trials that I'm, fiery trials that I'm in the midst of. But um, he's in Knoxville, Tennessee. It's called a pub church. It's in a bar. Let's look it up. Pub church in a bar. It's like, man, he doesn't even look like a preacher. He looks like a hillbilly, kind of, you know, but he's a very sweet guy, very kind. Went out for dinner with him. Long story, but his wife's sweet, good people. Sunday morning, he's in the bar preaching. Pulling people out. Messy, ugly. Those dark places. That's where God wants to go. That's the offering he wants from us. He wants our sin. Why does he want our sin? That's what I asked him. I said, why would you want our sin, God? It's dirty, ugly, messy, stinky. There's more message. There's a lot of messages here, guys. Maybe you have one. Maybe you can take off with this. Great. Awesome. I am not. I don't care. Plagiar there's no plagiarism involved in it. Take. Go. Run. Be his voice. Why would you want that ugliness, God? Those dark places. Because he wants a bride to be without spot, blemish, or wrinkle. He wants to put a robe of righteousness on us. Washed under the blood of the Lamb. Jesus died for our sins. So when we don't give them all to him, in some ways it's kind of making a mockery of the cross, guys, a little bit. We're not fully trusting in him. And that's part of these storms coming. These idols are coming apart. Things we put before God. America's pretty bad about it too, guys, honestly. We kind of got an attitude. <clears throat> I hate to tell you that. It's the watchman. I don't like it either. It's me too. The one about the abortion, what he showed me, it's like, man, God, that hurt. <clears throat> I'll end with this. It's another message. I just haven't got to it, but it's going to be part of the storm, part of the idols. But, <clears throat> and it's, there's a lot more to this one. <clears throat> this is part of his voice. I'm like, you ever hear that message? That'll preach. Well, my wife and I, every Sunday night for the last three years, we've been at a homeless shelter. And we're about to expand it, and some other things have opened up, and it's pretty amazing. But one day I told him, I said, guys, I'm not here for the offering. There's 40-some people. <clears throat> or sometimes there is 40, 50 people. Sometimes there's 20. <clears throat> I said, I'm not here for the offering. If I call for an offering, I get two bucks and some pocket lint. They all laughed. But what I'm, where I'm going with this is about being his voice in those stinky, dark, dirty places. And he wants our heart, our whole heart, guys, and these storms that are coming. So he's just, what he's working and expanding and telling us to do is pretty unre unreal to me. It's like, okay, God. But I'm just doing the obedience piece. But this this is what he told me. You ever hear that message? That'll preach. This won't. He told me my platform's wherever he sends me. I don't need a church. I don't need a platform. I don't need a crowd. I don't even need a microphone. I got YouTube, whatever. 7-Eleven. Man, I've ministered to people wherever. The Holy Ghost. And you too. Part of being his voice. You may have a family. You may be a single stay-at-home mom or dad or whatever or college or the guy in the cubicle next to you that's going through a horrible divorce or gal. I don't know. Or the kid at some of these places that barely make minimum wage that just needs a little bit of encouragement, even a kind word or whatever. But this is the message. That, that'll that preach. This won't. I am going to put this message out soon, but... I was in prayer, it's been a while, over almost a year ago. He said, it's time for people in the ministry to get over themselves. Ouch, God. That'd be me. That hurts. A lot more than just a paper cut. It kind of break my heart. What are you talking about, God? He said, go to Second Chronicles 7, 
14 favorite scripture. A lot of people are quoting it now, Mike Pence, and, and I'm grateful for that, thankful for that. And it's a great scripture. Because we told me to go to, he said, imagine if my people humbled themselves, prayed, sought me, seek my face, turned. There's way more to it than that, guys. I got some depth to it. I'm just not going to get into it tonight. This message has already got too long. But that's part of being his voice. So what's he telling you to do? I'm going to end with this. The enemy, this is a whole other message too, but in Genesis, Adam and Eve, did God really say that? It gets us to question. Because then he can muck it up pretty bad. Sometimes it's done by people around us. Sometimes it's done by ourselves, guys, honestly. Or others. Pray. Humble yourselves. Seek his face. What's he telling you to do? Get it out. Let it out. I don't like the saying, but let it all hang out. Oh, well. Kind of doesn't make any sense, but yet again, then it might. You get the picture, and one picture of it's not good, but maybe it's time to just, you know, that, that's me kind of, guys. Messy Marvin, Larry the Cable Guy kind of mixed together. So, love you guys. Maybe you're more polished. Maybe you're not. Like I said, Matthew 20 is a great, could be a great starter conversation piece. But anyhow, we love you guys.